Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday afternoon, February 23rd, 2020, and I'm going to do a weekly update here. We're going to focus on methane today. We've got a lot to talk about about methane and permafrost, and I want to start, though, with Climate Reanalyzer. Now, I did an impromptu show Monday night where I was showing Climate Reanalyzer, and the Arctic was, what, 3.5C or something like that. I didn't mean to do that. <coughs> and um, I was kind of flipping out. But um, here's a 2 meter temperature anomaly map from today. And the Arctic is at 3.7 C. The world is at 0.9 C higher than normal. The Northern Hemisphere is 1.7 C higher than normal. The tropics are up 0.6 C. The Southern Hemisphere is up 0.2 C. And the Antarctic is up 1.4 C. And um, we have seen it this high before. We've seen it higher than that. I just, in the past, I've just kind of looked at the colors and didn't really look and before in the last few months, I haven't really looked that closely at these numbers. I was just mainly looking at the colors, but now I'm looking at the numbers too very closely. And here's the flat view. And I was wondering, you know, have we seen the Arctic this high before? Now the world, the 0.9 higher you know, that's definitely going up, but um, we're seeing an increase in methane. When I show you the NOAA data, you're going to flip out today, but um, there's a place on Climate Reanalyzer. If you go to Daily Reanalysis and Sea Ice Maps, and you can choose all these different things, but um, so we can look at historically at 2 meter temperature anomaly. I chose the Arctic view. You could get the world view or Antarctic or North America. And um, I chose for the month of January 2019. And on January the 1st of 2019, so a little over a year ago, here's what the Arctic looked like. And Russia was covered up in red and brown, and northern Canada was covered up in red and brown, and the Arctic was up 4.1 C. So we have seen it higher than what we're at. Now the world was only up 0.5 C, and today it's up 0.9 C. So it's definitely warming up. So if you just look back historically, um, and I found in December of 2018, now here it was, January 1st of 2018, the world was only up 0.4 C, and the Arctic was 3.5 C, higher than normal. So this time of year, it seems like the Arctic is getting up there. Now if you look at December of 2018, uh, and you can, what you can do, you can move the slider day by day and watch it on the right, <coughs> watch it change. Like here on December the 5th of 2018, the Arctic was 3.4 C and the world was only 0.3 C. So this is how much has changed just in two years. Here it was on December the 6th, it was 4.4 C higher in the Arctic.
and then it went down to 3.7 so it fluctuates it can fluctuate quite a bit from day to day just depending on the jet stream and the heat waves and things like that <coughs> now here it was on December 11th it was 4.3 C and it was 0.5 C on the world and here's what it looked like on December 11th of 2018 so here's 4.5 C higher and 0.7 for the world so here we can see it was that we're having a heat wave up in northern Canada <coughs> that was in the red so I just wanted to clarify some things so it on, they only archive like three months back so the latest on the archive is November of 2019 and the Arctic was at 2.5 C there and the world was 0.3 so quite a bit different than what we're seeing today of <coughs> the world being up 0.9 C and the Arctic being up 3.7 and the Antarctic is up too it's all red down here by the Ross Ice Shelf so I just wanted to start off with that and clear that up and if if you're not subscribed to my subscribe to star channel you're kind of missing out because I've gotten back to full reporting on a daily basis over there I do at least one video a day over there for my members and I not only cover methane, it's not little silent movies like I was doing for a while there where when I was so busy taking care of my dying friend and and going taking care of business after he died and everything. I'm back to full time reporting, but um over there on my my daily updates I cover uh climate reanalyzer, I cover sea ice. I cover methane, I cover sulfur dioxide, I cover earthquakes, I cover articles, my latest research, um, all kinds of stuff. And normally the videos are 20 to 30 minutes long. So I recommend you check it out. I mean, if you're not watching those videos, you're kind of missing out on all the latest stuff. And there's so much going on, I can't be posting both places all the time. So I've chosen to focus on Subscribestar. I'm trying to build build my audience over there because I just don't know how much longer my YouTube channel is going to be up. But, you know, everyone likes going to YouTube. And I understand. It's easy. And it's free. And subscribe story you have to pay five dollars a month so if it's not worth that to you then you know that's the way it is and I know some people are on a real tight budget and you know feel like they can't afford it and in which case I put all of the archives on my website you can go check out my archives over there it's a month old but you know you can get it there so there's that so let's start with methane from CAMS Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services and we're going to look at yesterday Saturday the 22nd they've got the 23rd data up but the NOAA data is from the 22nd so so we have an accurate comparison we're going to go from yesterday the 22nd I had the Arctic view pulled up and surface level and so there's our color chart and this is where it left off on Friday we've been seeing this populating of methane here in the Kara Sea and 
in the Latep Sea off the coast of Severnaya here and also here from this <coughs> coming up from this East Siberia ice shelf or Arctic shelf and in in this Chukchi Sea in Arctic Ocean and it's actually com been coming up into in the red and this has been doing this consistently for the last week and so this th this leads into what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the video today and also high releases off the north coast of Alaska so let's run this movie So we can see that in the forecast period it kind of moves on out but um, and then more comes up but this has been coming up and we've been seeing these higher releases into the yellows and in the last few weeks coming up and remember that at the beginning of January CAMS was down for about 10, de 10 days and and um, they changed some things and I believe that the algorithms were changed for the Arctic views and that um, that the numbers numbers were tweaked by the algorithms so that so that we wouldn't see the higher readings and be flipping out and they've done this a couple of times you know they just they do this periodically and it's the way it is and we're the methane's not going away it's not going it's not declining it's not going to go away we're on a runaway train now <clears throat> now let's look at the North Pole view Here we see high releases in the Indian Ocean and covering up India and coming out in this Arabian Sea, high releases in the Persian Gulf and high releases coming back in China and out in the Pacific Ocean. This arm moves out and then it's creeping up into um, southern Russia there and also in North America we've got it coming up this is an area in North Dakota that's been constantly going off and I just did some research and did um, a little a report on that for my Subscribestar members in my latest methane video and right here's the tar sands and so we're seeing methane come up from there we're seeing high releases still in California and then from the middle of the United States coming all the way across <clears throat> and now let's take a peek at the global view And if you look where my pointer is pointed, um, this white spot keeps popping up in China. And that's an, that's, I'm thinking that means that's an area that it's so high that can't register it. And it, it's been, we've been seeing this from week to week. It's always there. That's in northern China. And now let's look at 500 HPA. 
we can see it much darker today and I will refresh so we can get the right color ledger they still haven't fixed their overlapping numbers down here but it goes up to 2360 is the highest and it's high high releases here over China and Asia and then it's you know covering the whole Arctic region and northern hemisphere and total column this is what it looks like total column wise and I will refresh and we're seeing it the high releases now over India and the southern part of India and down here in the South Pacific here also coming up from South America now let's look at some NOAA data I'm going to start with <coughs> um, this was a high reading that I saw on NOAA this week this was from uh, the Met Op 2 satellite from the afternoon of the 19th and this is the 477 slash 469 millibar reading and the range, the high end of the range was 2641 parts per billion. And that's the fuchsia color. It can range anywhere right here between 2000 ppb and up. So we don't know where it was the highest. They're not showing us that. But where it's the densest in the fuchsia you can assume that's where it was now this is the NOAA data from the 21st and it's just hard for me to take this seriously with the numbers and the mean they say it was 1865 well I haven't seen it that low on this satellite met op 1 in the morning ever and it's because there's all this missing data and it's like what are they hiding here's the Met Op 1 in the afternoon where it was 1877 still huge areas are missing <clears throat> and look at this straight line going across of missing data here's the Met Op 2 in the morning same day again huge areas of missing data and then met up two in the afternoon that was all from the 21st now let's put that aside and let's get to this week's data so this is um, the Met Op 1 satellite from yesterday in the morning the mean was 1877 we still have some missing data in the middle in the Atlantic but it's not like the day before the, the range was 1455 to 2452 parts per billion here it is in the afternoon the mean was 1879 and the range is 1434 to 2439 and we can see all this fuchsia color up across the northern hemisphere it's equating to the red that we saw on the 500 HPA on CAMS now here's the Met Op 2 in the morning and the mean was 1870 now that's a very high reading for this satellite I mean that's uncharacteristically high but so I'm thinking methane's just going up that much the range was 1487 to 2349 
and in the afternoon the mean was 1868 and the range was 1431 to 2341. Now here's our spreadsheet that we've been looking at. <coughs> And so we took all those numbers and added them up and divided by 4. And the average for this level, for NOAA, for this week, is 1873.5 parts per billion. And that's an increase this week of 7.5 parts per billion. And so here's this line going straight up almost. And it went up the week before, it went up 2.75. So in the last two weeks, it's gone up over 10 parts per billion. That's insane. That's insane. And we're almost back to our March 1st anniversary. Um, I started tracking this March 1st of last year. And just, you know, keeping the same same level and everything and since March 1st of last year it's gone up 16.25 parts per billion so I'm kind of flipping out over here and I started doing recently I started just tracking daily um, in the last few days I started just saying well I'm going to track this daily and see what's going up here it was on the 8th and that was a couple of weeks ago alright here we are for the 22nd so because it started going back up after this decrease on the 8th so since the 8th it's gone up 10.25 parts per billion but um so here it was on the 15th I missed the 16th but here's what it was doing like on a daily basis and here in two days it went up 2.75 here in one day it went up 2.5 and then the next day it went down 0.75 and then this is the day where all the white stuff, white areas were on NOAA, so that was in inaccurate. So even with the inaccurate, it went down uh, 0.2, and then here, here we are, uh, 4.5. But if if this if this day was inaccurate, then um, it would have only gone up to two and a half points from the 20th to the 22nd. So this is why we have to do it long term because it fluctuates and sometimes their data is skewed and you know it's hard to tell. So next weekend will be a year because Saturday will be the February 29th since it's a leap year and that would have been March 1st <clears throat> yeah I just looked at the calendar to make sure so we're higher than where we started a year ago by 16.25 parts per billion almost a year in a week it will have been a year so we'll see what happens this week if it goes up if it stays the same or if it goes down now let's leave that <clears throat> and I have more methane stuff to go over this whole show is going to be about methane I want to hop back over to YouTube and I had um, Sultan Bev is a really smart guy and he's one of my my viewers and he left this comment under my show from last week my update from last week 
and he says, have you seen this paper guy flagged up? And when he first put it up, he didn't have the link up there. So anyway, he went back and put the link in. And I'm going to go over the paper in a minute. And I said, not yet, Sultan Bev, but I saw his video this morning. There's a link to the video, and that's where he's talking about the Arctic permafrost. I said, do you have the link for this paper? This is unbelievable. We're so close to the end. And then, then I say, um, here's another recent interview from Guy McPherson. It was done on 116.20, but just posted on YouTube. He discusses the events that are happening now, indicating how much closer we are to the end. At the 43 minute 30 second mark, he talks about the exponential release of methane in the Arctic and the East Siberian ice shelf that's happening now. I've been seeing it come up red on cams in that area for the last week or so. Time is short. And then I give the link. And we're going to listen to that in a minute. And then Sultan Bev says, here's the paper. I say thanks. And then he says, doing the maths, if the amount of permafrost in geographical area that switches from gradual thawing to abrupt thawing increases from 5% to 10%, then the effects triple. If the area of permafrost going into abrupt thawing increases to 15%, then the effects would quadruple. It doesn't say what the effects are, but Sam Carana shows an expected 1.6 degrees C rise from all Arctic ice and permafrost melt. Let's not forget the 2019 study that showed the Antarctic has 1.5 to 150 times more carbon trapped, un trapped under the ice than the Arctic does. We'll need a new observation system to measure the percent a permafrost that is abruptly thawing as as opposed to gradually thawing. And I said, I don't know if we have enough time left for that new system of observation to be developed. So I'd like to thank Sultan Bev for this discussion here and for the link to the paper. And now we're going to look at this paper. And it's from CU Boulder today. University of Colorado in Boulder and this is was um, this article was published on February 3rd of this year Arctic permafrost thaw plays greater role in climate change than previously estimated <clears throat> abrupt thawing of permafrost will double previous estimates of potential carbon emissions from permafrost thaw in the Arctic and is already rapidly changing the landscape and ecology of the circumpolar north, a new CU Boulder-led study finds. So if it doubles the amount of carbon dioxide that's released, we're in big trouble because the carbon dioxide is what hangs around for a hundred years. So, anyway, I'll just read this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It gets kind of long, but I'll leave the links below and you can also go to the comment and find it. Permafrost, a perpetually, well, they thought it was perpetual, but perpetually frozen layer under the seasonally thawed surface layer of the ground affects 8 million, 18 million square kilometers at high latitudes or one quarter of all the exposed land in the northern hemisphere. Current estimates predict permafrost contains an estimated 1500 petagrams of carbon which is equivalent to 1.5 trillion metric tons of carbon. 
The new study distinguishes between gradual permafrost thaw, which affects permafrost and its carbon stores slowly, versus more abrupt types of permafrost thaw. Some 20% of the Arctic region has conditions conducive to abrupt thaw due to its ice-rich permafrost layer. Permafrost that abruptly thaws is a large emitter of carbon, including the release of carbon dioxide as well as methane, which is more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. That means that even though at any time Less than 5% of the Arctic permafrost region is likely to experience to be experiencing abrupt thaw. Their emissions will equal those of areas experiencing gradual thaw. This abrupt thawing is fast and dramatic, affecting landscapes in unprecedented ways. Okay, so this study was published in Nature Geoscience, so you can do your own research and find that. And here's a quote from it. Forests can become lakes in the course of a month. Landslides occur with no warning. And invisible methane seep holes can swallow snowmobiles whole. So forests can become lakes in the course of a month. Abrupt. Permafrost thaw can occur in a variety of ways, but it always represents a dramatic, abrupt ecological shift. Systems that you could walk on with regular hiking boots and that were dry enough to support tree growth when frozen can thaw, and now all of a sudden these ecosystems turn into a soupy mess. Anyway, here's pictures. Now we've seen pictures of this that were it looks like this honeycomb thing where the land just falls away because that's the permafrost and just the land collapses and there's nothing there. And here's another picture where it's like these slumps, they call them slumps. <clears throat> and nothing can grow there. And we've talked about this. I've shown papers on this and you know, we can see the permafrost moving across the landscape like lava and overtaking buildings and stuff. So we're going to be seeing more and more and more of this. And so what they've found is this is this permafrost melt is not included in their climate models. And especially the abrupt the abrupt melting. So they said they're going to have to find new new ways of observing. So and you can you, well, you can go on Google Earth and you can see on Google Earth whole areas in the Arctic that look like this up in Siberia. And there's a lot of lakes in between there too. And so it just turns into swampy, swampy messes. And then once it melts, then more microorganisms can grow and then more methane. And it's a whole other self-reinforcing feedback loop. And now one more thing I want to cover. Um, this, is, um, this is a video from Human Performance Outliers podcast. It was published a couple of days ago on February 21st. This is their YouTube channel and it's episode 188 and these two guys. I thought it was a good interview. I really enjoyed it. I listened to the whole thing. Um, interviewed Guy McPherson saying will the world end sooner than we think and they talked about all all the different systems that could fall apart and how fast and all of this and I think um, we, we're going to see we're that much closer to the end but I'm at the 43 minute 31 second mark and I just want to play a little bit for you 
and he's talking about the Natalia Shikova study with the East Siberian ice shelf and the Arctic, com the methane bubbling up and all that. So listen to this. Another huge factor that has long been predicted and that is now underway is the exponential release of methane from the Arctic Ocean. The East Siberian Arctic Shelf is the largest continental shelf in the world. That's where Natalia Shkova and her research team, including her partner, her partner Igor Semelotov, have been conducting research for well over a decade with many, many expeditions beneath and on top of the ice there. And sure enough, as expected, the methane being released from the Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Arctic Ocean generally has clearly gone exponential. And that's really, really horrible news because methane is more than 100 times more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is. So for every molecule of methane, CH4, that's at least 100 times more powerful than a molecule of carbon dioxide, CO2. All right, so there you have it. There you have it. So he's saying it's underway, and that interview was done on January the 16th. And so he's talking about, let's just do a little review. It's an exponential release of methane from the Arctic Ocean and this East Siberia Arctic Shelf. I call it the I ice shelf but it's an arctic shelf underneath here it's this area here and so that's what we're seeing it's all it's coming up and across the arctic ocean and he's saying it's ex an exponential release and so these colors i'm thinking that you know these algorithms really were were dealt with changed tweet on cams remember I talked about that and it was down for 10 days and 1st of January and then when it came back up everything where it had been releasing red and orange was now like green and so we should be seeing lots of yellows and oranges and reds instead we're seeing different shades of green but um this is this is this area and right here right here is Bennett Island and that's where they they found they measured the uh, methane pluming up out of the ocean and we can even go back to Wednesday let's go back and I can show you that 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 has been pulsing up like if we run it from Wednesday it might take a minute to look if you see here it's coming up and here you can see it the chartreuse so just think this is exponential methane see this and then it develops into this red area that we just saw and over here on the coastline too. So we've been seeing this area now it's really starting to come up in the last couple of weeks. And what it does, it'll build and release, and then it'll kind of fade out, and then it'll build and release again. So, <clears throat> if you want to hear that again, I will rewind it. I think it bears listening to again. Here we go. Another huge factor that... <coughs> has long been predicted and that is now underway is the exponential release of methane from the Arctic Ocean. You hear that? 
now underway exponential release of methane from the Arctic Ocean. That's what he said. The East Siberian Arctic Shelf is the largest continental shelf in the world. That's where Natalia Shakova and her research team, including her partner, her partner Igor Semelotov, have been conducting research for well over a decade with many, many expeditions beneath and on top of the ice there. And sure enough, as expected, the methane being released from the Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Arctic Ocean generally has clearly gone exponential. And that's really, really horrible news because methane is more than 100 times more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is. All right. So there you have it. So it's gone exponential. And so what I'm thinking is we don't have to see methane fill up the whole screen. We don't have to have a blast, a blowout in order for it, for it to affect everything. It can be this constant releasing, releasing, releasing like what we've been seeing. And I'll show it to you. Here's today. And here's see it's finishing up. This release is kind of moving out and kind of finishing up. And but look at this huge release, and it's this is the Severnaya Emilia. Here and this has just been populating over and over and over again. And remember, it used to be over here by Novaya Emilia, and now it's moved. And then over here off the coast of Alaska. And now we're seeing. I just now saw this on Svalbard. Did you see that? We'll run it. You see that? Yeah, it's popping up on Svalbard. A huge, uh, large, not large, um, high, high methane. It's in the dark there. It's red and dark brown. So, we're in the middle of it. What can I say? So like I said, we don't have to have a blowout where it fills up the whole screen with yellow or red. It can be this constant bubbling up and releasing, bubbling up and releasing. And this area is just now coming into sunlight. Most of this, most of the coastline is in the sunlight. And next week, we'll look at the sea ice or I might do a special uh, sea ice update in the middle of the week. I'll have to see how things go this week. But um, that's where we're at. So we need to be looking at these lighter colors of green, all these different shades of green as this is serious methane release all the way across all the way across. So I will keep everyone posted and updated and time is short. If you haven't gotten right with God and Jesus, I recommend it highly. So until next time, I'm Margo. My website is Margo's Healing Corner and if you would like to contribute to the cause, I have a PayPal link below or if you'd like to subscribe to my subscribe star page for five dollars a month you get all the latest so i love you guys and i'm praying for everybody and um you know it's all it's all coming down all at once it looks like so i'll talk to you soon god bless you go in peace and goodbye <music>